What is up YouTube McIntyre here Today I wanted to bring you guys a new type of video not even a new type but just a new video talking about what in my opinion is the one of the most important roles during a Heroes of the Storm game and that is the trash man uh, the trash man is the role on the team that's normally the off tank or the melee player and your entire point of uh, your role within the game is to soak up experience when your team isn't able to um, basically you know as a solo laner especially nowadays uh, it used to be solo laner was more of this 1v1 matchup where you were trying to fight the other person and you know whoever won the lane would you know dominate and push in and get towers and whatnot but nowadays a lot of the time with a solo laner you, you kind of get camped uh, or the other team will rotate and try to kill you and because of that you, it's kind of created this new role where you're not so much uh, it's not so important to win the lane but it's more so important to gain experience within the lane and not lose that experience so that's kind of the role that I fill on my team on Heroes Hearth and it's uh, a role that I don't think a lot of people even give a, a time of day right um, because no one really understands it that much or doesn't respect it. And it is important because it's the hero that kind of keeps the team in the game and gets the team ahead if the other team uh, doesn't soak uh, or trash man as well, right? And you see a lot of heroes like Sonya in this game will be watching. Uh, I'll be playing Sonya and I'll just be running around kind of soaking up experience. But there are heroes, you know, out there like Falstad is another one. Um, and then you have some supports nowadays we usually see Brightwing or Rhaegar who can easily get XP fast or siege or push out a wave quickly and then rotate safely. Um, obviously with Brightwing, it would be more of a global. Uh, Dahaka was the kind of bread and butter of this sort of role in the sense that you were just soaking on Dahaka until you needed to ZN. But a lot of the time on this role, you're mostly relying on your four man while you create um, kind of the pressure off of them to you know, not have to soak and more so focus on, I guess, getting kills and wave clearing, I mean, and, you know, getting out camps and whatever, winning the objective, right? So we're going to hop into this game. Now that you know more about this trash man role, uh, we're going to hop into this game and kind of look at it from my point of view. Obviously, I'm going to be playing Sonya this game. And I honestly believe that she is one of the better of these heroes at the moment. Uh, the reason for that is that she sieges and pushes very safely with her whirlwind ability you can even watch uh, my mouse clicks this game too i don't know when they added this but we'll just follow this along this actually makes it a bit easier for me uh, but you can see you know with sonia a lot of the time you're you'll you'll end up being full health even when you're pushing in because of your ability to whirlwind on the lane and i think you know being able to always be full health in the solo lane is really powerful because of its ability to you know when you do get ganked you don't just die right like the, the this Tyrael for example he really can't poke any damage onto me right he can't soften me up for a gank um so if someone wants to come and gank me they'll have to they'll have to you know be f almost you know have a perfect gank right because i'll be full health i'll be able to whirlwind through them um, so because of that, Sonya, I think is a really strong trash man, um, in that sense. Um, so you can see here though, my team is fighting and they're getting kills and Wallace, they're doing that. I'm soaking out this middle and top lane, right? Um, Tyrael is a little bit of a weaker hero again, when it comes to this kind of role, because he doesn't push and wave clear that well. Um, you can see here, I'm going to end up catching two waves of experience. Um, while the Tyrael is only able to catch one. And that's just because he doesn't have very good wave clear. Uh, another good hero at wave clear is like someone like Rhaegar too. I just talked about that earlier. Um, you know, Rhaegar can do exactly what I'm doing here as Sonya really safely with his Lightning Bond Town at level one. And you just kind of get the wave pushing and then you rotate and maybe you find Soak. Maybe you can catch a rotation on the enemy team and rotate into them. Uh, causing a 4v5 you can see here too I, I see their entire enemy team um, all five heroes so I opt to tank some tower shots but the reason for that is that I need to get that wave push as fast as possible 
so that I can get an experience lead. Um, and you see right now uh, with this Tyrael here, uh, he's unable to get all of this experience. I end up getting a tower even without even pushing. And yeah, we're, we, we have a almost a half a level lead just from, you know, soak and a couple kills, right? We're two kills up at this point. Um, but here again, you know, my team is fighting here, but I'm focusing on getting XP. I want to push out the middle lane. And now that now that I've pushed out the waves, I'm rotating again. So if you get waves pushed, you can rotate. And then the reason for that is by pushing the wave, you kind of force the other team to rotate and catch that experience. And if they don't, then they're going to be set behind a wave of experience. If you look at the experience right now in this game, we are already a level up at 2 minutes and 30 seconds in. And while you know we are, again, two kills up, a lot of it comes down to experience. Um, if you look at my experience contribution compared to Tyrael's, I've doubled the experience that he's contributed to the game. Um, and that is probably at least half a level of uh, XP that I'm already ahead just by pushing and wave clearing efficiently, right? And again, you do have to let your team kind of control the game. Um, but in most cases, if you're rotating and soaking correctly, you can get ahead just by yourself in a solo lane, right? And then, you know, you can do what I'm doing here where I've caught the experience and now I'm rotating a team fight. Like I want to, you know, I want to assist. I want to help to fight over the objective. Um, in this in this point in the game, I, I again I recognize that Tyrael is here. That's all five of their members, and so I'm going to go and soak instead. Um, the one thing with this comp in particular is we are very much so a level ten comp, and you can see here I say stall, I'll soak. Um, we're very much so a level ten comp, so beating the enemy to level ten can give us a huge advantage, right? Um, and just holding a level lead throughout the game just keeps you ahead and keeps you at advantage. So while, you know, we might be giving up a tribute, or in this case, a channel, not a tribute, sorry, uh, we are gonna get ahead and experience, right? Uh, and we wanna hold that experience lead. So one tribute or channel on this map is not any gain in experience. It might be a little bit, I'm not actually sure on that. Um, but like a minion wave, most definitely it will get you ahead here. I need to be careful. The Tyrael, you could see him posture here and he rotated to check. Uh, so I had to be careful there just in case I don't have vision again, you know, on this role, it's mostly the most important part about playing the solo is just not dying. So you have to really pay attention to where, uh, the enemy is on the map and what information you have and don't have. Right. So if for whatever reason, this variant was missing then I'd have to play like the Varian was going to gank me. But if the Varian's showing, then, you know, I can play like Varian showing and I can dominate my lane, right? Uh, so that's something important, too, to note that uh, as a solo laner, a lot of the time, you do need to, you, you should push your advantage when you, when you have it, but you should also be careful of, you know, your positioning depending on who's showing on the map. Uh, honestly, like, the whole vision thing is a, is a whole other conversation to have. Here I see Rhaegar rotate up, so I'm going to try to trade into him. And I trade pretty nicely, actually. Uh, Brightwing leaves, so I just decide to leave. And again, you can see my team, they have a nice four-man going on bottom. They're picking up kills, and I'm going to rotate mid, get this middle soak, then rotate top, get that top soak. So again, I just want to be soaking up experience this entire time and just relying on my team to use the experience level that I'm giving and gaining, or like the lead that I'm gaining to get kills, right? Uh, to further our lead. So here we're pushing in. Uh, I guess super quick, we can go over Sonya build. I took block this game for the Zul'jin. Uh, I like Shattered Ground out four to, again, siege faster, push faster. You can also jungle a little bit better with uh, the Shattered Ground talent. So for doing pumpkins, it's a little better. And then Poison Spear for just the upfront burst when you land Spear. Uh, it's a really good follow-up on this kind of one shot we got going on with the Murder and Mouth. So, um, but here again, you know, 
we we've kind of lost a little bit of our experience lead, but we're still somewhat ahead. Um, one thing that you know I was just pointing out my build, but I kind of didn't mention this because I was looking at the build instead. Um, so when I pushed out that top wave, I talked about earlier, sometimes when you push out waves, the enemy has to rotate to soak the wave or they're gonna get behind in the experience. And in this case, Tyrael showed top to soak that XP after I pushed out top lane. In doing so, I had rotation on him, right? So here, I have a rotational lead. He's probably somewhere in here. Let's see where he's at, yep. So he's in here, he's, he's here, and I'm all the way down here. So this is a 4v5 now. Because I push out faster than him, I have the rotational lead, therefore our team gets a 4v5, right, without the Tyrael being here. Um, I end up landing the Spear on Apex, and we get the kill. Uh, fortunately, you know, the Tyrael does get that middle shrine channel, but that's fine. Again, kills our XP lead, and XP lead, you know, is an advantage throughout the entirety of the game. So, one for one. And we get experience is not a bad thing and you can see here now the fights over so instead of standing around waiting for something to happen I just want to rotate and try to get these waves pushed um, again you can see their you know Tyrell showing bottom I, I see the Rhaegar but now Rhaegar has to soak that and I head top and again I'm keeping the enemy you know on this rotation right so by pushing these waves out, this Rhaegar will have to rotate up here to soak this. And you'll probably see that soon. And again, we're going to try to get these pumpkins out. Here's the Rhaegar. Uh, we'll try to get the pumpkins. Have to be a little careful here. Because we don't see anyone other than the Rhaegar. So their whole team could be rotating up here, right? Uh, the Brightwing zing in was nice. She provided the vision. So now we can just push in. Uh, if, if if the one nice thing about Sony in particular is if you are, uh, you know, uncontested, you can do exactly what I do here. Just hit Wrath and Siege as hard as possible. Uh, obviously, on a map like this one, um, it's a little awkward, right? Because you get these buildings and then they can take them back. So here I hit Wrath. Uh, and I don't really know if I needed to, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to have Wrath for this fight. Normally it's okay using Wrath to get a four or potentially pressure a keep, right? It's okay in these early stages, especially, you know, one death at level 11 or 12 isn't going to be the end of the world. Uh, for especially a keep or some, a four or something like that. So here I get the channel, we pressure out that Tyrael. They did a great job here of zoning. And you can see up here even, you know, this building that we just took, Brightwing's able to defend it, cause the enemy to have to, you know, try to 2v1 him. And he ends up getting the outplay on the Oriole. So uh, that pressure, that, that siege that we created gave us an advantage there, right? Not only to be a tribute, I did more damage uh, on the channel. We also, you know, caused the kill to happen because they're trying to defend that. And I want to use this space right here, you know, seeing these two, to now pressure out bottom. So kind of, you know, this role again is you're always pressuring the enemy to come to you, right? And if they don't, then you push even harder. And you're going to see that again here. So we see three people top, and again, I'm gonna activate Wrath and just make sure we get this done. Uh, and in most cases, you know, like I said, in most maps, you would then get a fort up, you'd have the experience lead, and yeah, you're, you're in a good spot, right? You wanna make that trade. Here, I'm trying to maintain my Wrath, which is actually a little scary because we see all five almost end up killing the Tyrael. Oh, that was awkward. I went to Spear in the Emerald. Hit him. Not a Spear ring. But yeah, so this fight, to me, it's not a bad fight. You know, it's 13-12 fight, honestly. But the way that their comp is kind of set up, they want to have, like, postured... They want to have, like, postured, protected fights. And in this case, you know, their, their comp has the protection from the safe zone if they play up to where they're at now then a flank can happen and and that's a decent fight for us but 
uh, I end up just getting these pumpkins out. I want to get back to soaking and get back on the rotation um, and just let my team defend this, right? If the other team commits all five players, uh, if they f commit all five players to take this objective, but I soak out middle and top, then, you know, we're going to get probably another level ahead um, because the other team's committing so many resources. And a lot of the time, too, I mean, your foreman, in most cases, can do decent um, when it comes to defending something like that, right? Uh, in most cases, their foreman can do pretty well, right? So here, I'm making... This is... Honestly, uh, you know, looking at it right now, it's actually a pretty aggressive, aggressive rotation. My team can get punished here. All right, so I'm soaking. This is an aggressive soak. It's not bad. It's just not good, right? So we are going to get an XP lead, but in doing so, we kind of, you know, again, here's a 4v5, and, and a lot of the way that comps are designed nowadays, they can 4v5 fairly well right like the, the enemy won't be able to kill the double support and even then the, it, my team's almost killing this tyrell right now right uh luckily for us this Rhaegar messes up um otherwise this would have been really really bad but because the Rhaegar goofs i get a great flank i mean this is a super deep flank i was out of vision they don't see me here and yeah i i hit, I hit a wrath poison spear on Rhaegar, which is going to put a ton of pressure on Rhaegar, and obviously he can't ult himself. And you see here, Kyocha um, comes in with Genji Blade and has a Brightwing Shield on him. And I mean, me and him just absolutely tear the enemy team up. And this is just something that, you know, on the melee roll, a lot of the time, this is what you want to do. You kind of want to cause the enemy to panic. And in this case, we do exactly that uh, with that rotation and that flank. So while I did show up late, by showing up late, the other team wasn't really thinking about me anymore. And I got a disgusting, disgusting flank. And I got an XP lead from that soak that they didn't catch, right? So again, if you look at the stats now, we're at 13,000 experience contributed. Um, compared to, you know, Tyrael was my part or my opponent in this soak war Rhaegar ended up shifting into it but i mean i'm still 12 uh, uh i can't do math right now 8000 8000 experience ahead i don't know why i said 12 but double double and some change on top of you know 94000 siege damage so you can do this like you know I, i'm using sonya this game but you see this a lot of times with like rag players like rag on like Tomb of the Spider Queen is a great example. Uh, a lot of times, rags will just soak on Tomb, and they'll just continue to push and split, right? And in doing so, you know, you really create a lot of pressure. Obviously, on that map, it's a bit different because eventually you do have to push in and win. But it's a lot of the same concepts because you can wave clear so quickly on that hero that you can get XP contribution, uh, like a, a very high lead and XP um, just from wave clearing. Because if the other team doesn't respond to your wave clear, then they lose a soak. And if they do respond, then you rotate, right? And then you have a 4v5. Every time you get a push, a lead on the rotation, right? You can force a 4v5 somewhere on the map. This Rhaegar bites in and I just flub that spear so hard. But it's okay. Uh, here, instead of chasing after, I wanna maintain my wrath. So I just go right to sieging. Uh, honestly, I could have tanked that there and just spun on the wave. But yeah, I want to maintain Wrath. I don't really want Wrath to drop just yet, just in case a team fight breaks out underneath this. So I try to maintain the Wrath there instead of letting it drop and chasing after. Again, I'm the objective hero. Like, I get the sieging and the pushing done as Sonya. And by doing so, again, you let your team kind of do the rest, right? Get the kills, get the camps, cause, you know, ruckus on rotations and whatnot. Um, here, we're pushing in on this objective. This is really good. Obviously, bot, bot keep on towers is one of the best because you have double camp you can siege in with. It's also very hard to, you know, siege. You can defend it fairly easy. 
Um, so here, you know, that level lead that we had, you know, I've, I've been trying so hard to get, you know, we, we now have three levels up. So every team fight, even though they are on t even talent tiers and this is a chance for them to come back, right? Uh, it's still very, very difficult. Uh, it's still a very difficult fight. Here, I, I kind of go after the... I want to go after the Zul'jin, honestly. Uh, and we, me and Kyoche end up killing Zul'jin. So that was really good. Pretty good silence there. From Malph. And you can see my team just slowly winning the team fight. Here, I, I was kind of playing with this Varian, and I honestly, in my opinion, misplayed. Uh, I should have been, I should have been closer here, but you know he suicided for that taunt kill, so it's not even that bad. It's not even the end of the world. And our team ends up cleaning up again. Three level lead because we have spent so much time soaking this game, right? Or not eighteen thousand XP. Um, it it shows, right? It shows right here at the top. Uh, three levels ahead. Obviously, it is 19-6, but even with those kills, like, a lot of the fights have been at an advantage for us because of the XP, right? We've always, almost the entire game, been a level up. So every fight, just stat-wise, just raw stats, we, we've been stronger than the enemy team, right? So now, I mean, it's down to the kind of last team fight of the game, right? We're, we're at the point where soaking doesn't mean as much anymore. Um, and that's one thing to remember too. There is a point in the game where you no longer need to soak. And right now we are at that point in this game. Uh, we do not need to soak anymore. Instead, now we should be pushing for advantage uh, and trying to fight. Uh, so, you know, me and Brightwing are pushing out top here just to get it pushed into them. But I think in the reality of it, I honestly should be rotating mid. I don't think I thought that our team would get in a team fight here. Yeah, Emergence kind of like randomly dies, which sucks because we did have Brightwing could have Zed, and again, honestly, we should have rotated. These pumpkins don't mean anything at this point. Like we really just want to just pressure them now, right? Uh, we we have we have the level lead we have the experience lead so now our focus really should just be like making them run away right wherever they go we are there and that kind of should always be your goal once you have a level lead or you know or go and do an objective right uh, level leads tend to open up objectives for free here you can see the power of sonia level 20 so just solo 4v1 here And I force Aegis. I did have to use both my defensives, but I think using two defensives for Aegis at this point in the game is pretty good. And they're not level 20 yet. Murden's back up too. The unfortunate part about that though is that I, I honestly thought Brightwing was Z to me. Like if Brightwing Z's, Kyocha shows up, we might be able to get kills even. Uh, but my, my wrath does drop so we all not the fight i mean again murden was dead there so it was not too bad Tyrell's coming in here gonna try to steal this oh i remember this part of the game this is where the team just kind of started staggering over and over oh But we have such an advantage from our early game and you know now the the late game that really we just need one channel um, and I try to make this insanely swag play uh, which at about right now uh, I start to realize that they rotated a lot faster than I thought and <laughs> They have Tyrael, so this is absolutely, I mean, it's possible if Emerald Wind is up, but I, like, Emerald wasn't up either, and, like, they have Holy Ground on Tyrael, so that's just kind of a suicide 
at the end of the day. And now we have the enemy. I think, in my opinion, this is the enemy team misplaying. I, I think at this point, getting that top building is not worth anything. And honestly, making sure me and Kyocha can't just kill that for free is probably better. So we get to retake our bot. And this was very scary. This was a very, very scary moment, honestly. Uh, and I was like, oh god, Tyrael's gonna show up, and we're all gonna die. And here he comes the Tyrael. Uh, I was, like, so hesitant about this. Luckily, Rhaegar flubs uh, pretty hard, actually. And because of that, Malf gets a silence on both Oriel and the, uh, the Rhaegar. And we end up picking up that kill just immediately, right? Uh, and then Brightwing gets a good Emerald on Zul'jin. Uh, Kyocha obviously deblading out of his mind here. And with that, we are able to end the game. Uh, I here was trying to play up to defend this too. Since we were at 5-3. But yeah, now it's just kind of important to just make sure that they can't stop the Brightwing channel. But boom, there's the game. So let's hit tab and we'll look at the numbers. So we have 140,000 siege damage. We have 21,000, almost 22,000 XP contribution. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, a good example, hopefully, of what it means to be a trash man right uh obviously i didn't really go over sonia because the the importance of this video is not uh like sonia in particular it's that it's this is a certain role that you play within a team and i wanted to kind of explain what you are really doing on this role um it's not that you're just splitting and never fighting right and i think that that there that there's like a fine line and that's why the, the this role is usually the hardest on a team or one of the hardest because there's a fine line between when do you soak and when do you rotate and even me at you know the level that i feel like i'm at i mess up a lot of the time on that timing because there are times when you need to rotate but there are times when you rotate and you get punished for rotating right if you rotate down and you know the other team's four man is just strong enough that when you rotate nothing happens and then their solo laner uh, gets siege and you lose soak or they get towers, um, then you're behind again, right? You've given up something for nothing. Uh, so you have to be really, really careful about that. And when you, you know, as we look at the BlizzCon teams and, you know, when you watch this sort of role for each team, you'll start to notice that at the highest level, um, teams a lot of the time just allow the solo laner to AFK. So, in my, you know, if I'm looking at uh, MVP Rich, right, uh, you know, for him, if I if I watch his games, a lot of the time he just never fights. Like he's almost never there with his team, uh, and what he's doing is just XP soaking um, while they win basically four v fives, uh, or you know while they win four v fours, um, and then when an objective or something that needs to have him rotate happens, then he rotates. But up until that point, you should never really be rotating. Uh, and I think that's where a lot of people miss that a lot of the times is they'll rotate either, um, you know, they'll rotate at the wrong time, they'll rotate and they'll give up XP. But the reality of it is that you really shouldn't be rotating to help your team unless an objective is happening and there is a 5v5. Uh, and even then, sometimes, you know, you should let the other team have their fifth member there. If your team has four can contest those five, you see it happen on Curse Hollow sometimes. You see it happen on BOE, especially um, where you have you know your four man defending your immortal while you as this trash man character soak, right? And then that gives you an XP lead, which gets you to level 10. It happens on Sky Temple, it happens on Curse Hollow, it happens on sometimes on D-Shire, not really on D-Shire. That would be one map where I don't believe it actually happens. Um, but on these bigger rotational maps, right? You can punish the enemy team if they rotate too many resources and the resources that you have on that objective are enough 
to contest while you get value somewhere else on the map. So I guess by making this video, although I feel like there are at times I've talked too much about it, uh, I feel like after watching this video and making it for you guys, you understand that concept of you know what your role as this sort of melee second support is, right? It's not that you're not fighting, it's not that you're just AFK pushing, but you should be AFK pushing until you need to rotate and fight. Um, and you want to gain the experience level lead uh, by doing this, right? And in this case, you know, I do have the Sonya and what her greatest strength is, is that if she does get a hold of, like, let's say a wall, she'll just knock it down, much like an Illidan, right? Illidan, while well, I don't think he's the best right now in the current meta, he does the same thing, right? Where he pushes, he pushes, he pushes, and if he gets onto a wall with a minion wave, then he'll just take towers. Sony is a lot of the same way. And compared to something like Matthew, who has absolutely no siege at all, right? And can only push minions into the wall, into the tower. Uh, Dahaka is somewhere maybe in the middle between the two. Uh, but, you know, Matthew is a hero that is just much better at dominating a solo lane. So there are all sorts of different heroes that do and fill this role. Again, I talked about a few of them at the beginning. But. Yeah, the most important part is that you are getting XP for your team and that you're just kind of trusting your team to win with the pressure that you're creating in the solo lane. Um, my last little little tip before I end and wrap this up is remember as this hero, you cannot die because if you die, then the rest of your team's rotation gets messed up and the well-oiled uh, engine kind of starts to kick, right? You're an essential part of the game and when you die the rest of the team has to adapt to your death and that causes a lot of issues on rotations um usually ends in you know getting losing an objective for example uh so don't try your best to not die if you feel like you know the other team is missing and there could be that etc in the bush even if he is bottom lane doing the easy camp do not push out until you know where that etc is Otherwise, you know, that second he shows up in that brush because you said, oh, I, I doubt he's here, and then he's there, uh, and you get killed, you've just lost a lot of momentum for your team. So just be very careful of that, and that is, I guess, my golden rule for this position. Do not get caught out and die. Uh, that is your most, most important, important rule. So, but that's gonna be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to throw a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can always check me out on Twitch and Twitter. Those are going to be located in the description below. Uh, I might write up a write-up on Heroes Hearth uh, for this video. If I don't, that's okay. Still check out my Heroes Hearth profile. There's my all my tier lists and all my builds are on that website. You can check out all the content that I'm uploading there. It's a pretty neat site. Even if you're looking past my content, there's a lot of other content, a lot of other people talking and discussing Heroes of the Storm. So if you're into that, check it out. Uh, but that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you all so much. Uh, until the next time, I'll see you then. Cheers.